Hello, you gorgeous people. How are you doing? It's only me, good old Najar, and I'm back as usual with a reaction for you. And today, as it's Saturday, it's comedy weekend. So, that can only mean comedy reaction time. Woohoo! Right, I'm, I have got another George Carlin for you. And this one is Religion is a BS. Do you know what? No, I'm not going to get any ad revenue from this. Religion is bullshit. Normally, you have to wait 30 seconds for you to swear or whatever it is. But if I'm not getting any ad revenue, then why should I wait? <laughs> so, yeah. Um, I'm, not, I'm sure George wouldn't wait. Would he? he just go, no, fuck him. <laughs> so, anyway, I hope you're doing well. I hope... Um, to a lot of people, it'd be early morning when you watch this, won't it? So, I hope you've got a really good weekend planned. If you can, spare a couple of minutes just to have a look at a couple um, of the videos that I've put up. I put a few up yesterday, which was really, really good. And you need to check them out if you haven't already. What else you need to do as well is I was looking in my analytics on here uh, yesterday. And I saw, right, 96% out of 100, which is a huge number of you guys that watch my stuff, isn't subscribed. Come on, guys. What's the matter we are? Didn't think you'd be too scared to hit a subscribe button. It don't cost anything. So, if you're going to watch this, do me a small favour. If you haven't already... Hit that subscribe button. And most importantly, hit that like button as well. Just for the algorithm. Because then the algorithm will show my video, obviously, on more people's news feeds. So, right? Thanks for doing that. And as well as that, kabosh. Hit that notification bell. Hit the thumbs up so you like it. And like I just said, hit the subscribe button. Now, let's get on with George Carlin. You know what George is like. He said it as it was. And he basically, although it was stand-up comedy, it was almost like a philosophy as well that he was doing. Or the way he would talk to you, he would really make you think. So let's go with it, with uh, his take on religion. Are you ready? Three, two, one. Let's go. Come on, George. But in the bullshit department, in the bullshit department, a businessman can't hold a candle to a clergyman. Because I got to tell you the truth, folks. I got to tell you the truth. When it comes to bullshit, big time, major league bullshit. Wait a sec. What I'm going to do, uh, can I do this? Yep, I can. Right, I am going to shrink me down and make him bigger. You ready? There we go. Let's carry on. You have to stand in awe, in awe of the all-time champion of false promises and exaggerated claims, religion. No contest. No contest. Religion. Religion easily has the greatest bullshit story ever told. Think about it. Religion has actually convinced people that there's an invisible man living in the sky who watches everything you do every minute of every day and the invisible man has a special list of 10 things he does not want you to do and if you do any of these 10 things he has a special place full of fire and smoke and burning and torture and anguish where he will send you to live and suffer and burn and choke and scream and cry forever and ever till the end of time but he loves you Right, here's my question, guys. All right, I'm not going to go deep into the religious debate, okay? Because there's many different religions in this world, and they all believe in a supreme being in one way or another. That, I think we can all agree on, yeah? My argument is this. <clears throat> Most religions only go back 4,000 years maximum. And just in case you didn't hear that, 4,000 years? Well, we've got uh, artifacts 
that date back 12,000. So, what was they um, worshipping? That was the word I was looking for, worshipping. Yeah, what was they worshipping that, that long ago? If you don't believe me, check out um, Globekli Tepe. You know, in Turkey. Or, uh, yeah, and the one that's just before it, I think it's Carrion Tepe as well. Like, honestly, only 5% of all these have been uncovered and they've already dated them back, it adds up to 12,000 years ago. So, what was going on then? You know, so this is where it's difficult to, I don't know, believe or what when science says other things. But, oh, you never know. He loves you. He loves you and he needs money. <laughs> he always needs money. He's all powerful, all perfect, all knowing, and all wise. Somehow, just can't handle money. <laughs> Religion takes in billions of dollars, they pay no taxes, and they always need a little more. Now, you talk about a good bullshit story. Holy shit. <laughs> Thank you very much. But I want you to know, I want you to know something. This is sincere. I want you to know, when it comes to believing in God, I really tried. I really, really tried. I tried to believe that there is a God who created each of us in his own image and likeness, loves us very much, and keeps a close eye on things. I really tried to believe that, but I got to tell you, the longer you live, the more you look around, the more you realize something is fucked up. Something is wrong here. War, disease, death, destruction, hunger, filth, poverty, torture, crime, corruption, and the ice capades. <laughs> Something is definitely wrong. This is not good work. If this is the best God can do, I am not impressed. Results like these do not belong on the resume of a supreme being. This is the kind of shit you'd expect from an office temp with a bad attitude. And just between you and me, in between you and me, in any decently run universe, this guy would have been out on his all-powerful ass a long time ago. <laughs> and by the way, I say this guy because I firmly believe, looking at these results, that if there is a God, it has to be a man. No woman could or would ever fuck things up like this. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> if, if, if there is a God, if there is, I think most reasonable people might agree that he's at least incompetent and maybe, just maybe, doesn't give a shit. <laughs> doesn't give a shit, which I admire in a person and which would explain a lot of these bad results. So rather than be... See, I agree with what he's saying. And also, here's a question for you. I need you, like, if you want to answer, leave me answers in the comments, yeah, guys? Um... These are just genuine questions. As George just said, if he's all powerful, all willing, all wise, all loving, yeah, why does he allow babies to be born in pain with defects wrong with them, you know, with disorders that are wrong with them? That's not their fault, you know, where they're just constantly in pain and stuff like that. And, he creates these itty bitty, itty bitty microscopic, like fitting little worms and parasites that get into kids and start eating their eyeballs from the back outwards. That's actually true. What kind of God would do that if children are supposed to be so precious, perfect, and God's supposed to be all loving? Why, why would he create things like that? So just let me know in the comments. You know any answers like because yeah it's he's either very like if there is such a thing as a supreme being then it's very cruel or us like our creation is i don't know honestly don't know an experiment i mean you've got so many people now reckoning that we're we're in the matrix aren't we it's all a simulation i could probably go more with that 
to be honest with you, we're in a simulation, like a computer game. I mean, look how good we're making computer games now from what it used to be. You know? It's leaps and bounds. So, yeah, how do we know that we are not being by uh, we are not a computer game for something completely out of our capacity to even acknowledge. We don't. So yeah. Be just another mindless religious robot, mindlessly and, and aimlessly and blindly believing that all of this is in the hands of some spooky, incompetent father figure who doesn't give a shit. I decided to look around for something else to worship, something I could really count on, and immediately. I thought of the sun. Happened like that. <laughs> overnight, I became a sun worshiper. Well, not overnight, you can't see the sun at night. <laughs> the first thing the next morning, I became a sun worshiper. Several reasons. First of all, I can see the sun. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Unlike some other gods I could mention, I can actually see the sun. I'm big on that. If I can see something, I don't know. Kind of helps the credibility along, you know? <laughs> so every day I can see the sun as it gives me everything I need. Heat, light, food, flowers in the park, reflections on the lake, and occasional skin cancer. But hey, <laughs> at least there are no crucifixions and we're not setting people on fire simply because they don't agree with us. <laughs> sun worship is fairly simple. There's no mystery, no miracles, no pageantry, no one asks for money, there are no songs to learn, and we don't have a special building where we all gather once a week to compare clothing. <laughs> and the best thing, the best thing about the sun, it never tells me I'm unworthy. It doesn't tell me I'm a bad person who needs to be saved, hadn't said an unkind word, treats me fine. So, I worship the sun, but I don't pray to the sun. Know why? I wouldn't presume on our friendship. It's not polite. I've often thought people treat God rather rudely, don't you? Asking you know, trillions and trillions of prayers every day, asking and pleading and begging for favors, do this, give me that, I need a new car, I want a better job. And most of this praying takes place on Sunday, his day off. <laughs> it's not nice, and it's no way to treat a friend. But people do pray, and they pray for a lot of different things. You know, your sister needs an operation on her crotch. <laughs> your, your brother was arrested for defecating in a mall. <laughs> but most of all, you'd really like to fuck that hot little redhead down at the convenience store. <laughs> you know, the one with the eye patch and the club foot, huh? <laughs> Can you pray for that? I think you'd have to. <laughs> and I say, fine, pray for anything you want. Pray for anything. But what about the divine plan? Remember that? The divine plan. Long time ago, God made a divine plan. Gave it a lot of thought, decided it was a good plan, put it into practice. And for billions and billions of years, the divine plan has been doing just fine. Now you come along and pray for something. Well, suppose the thing you want isn't in God's divine plan. What do you want him to do? Change his plan? Just for you? Doesn't it seem a little arrogant? It's a divine plan. What's the use of being God if every rundown schmuck with a $2 prayer book can come along and fuck up your plan? <laughs> and here's something else, another problem you might have. Suppose your prayers aren't answered. What do you say? Well, it's God's will. Thy will be done. Fine, but if it's God's will and he's gonna do what he wants to anyway, why the fuck bother praying in the first place? <laughs> Seems like a big waste of time to me. <laughs> Couldn't you just skip the praying part and go right to his will? It's all very confusing. So to get around a lot of this, I decided to worship the sun. But as I said, I don't pray to the sun. You know who I pray to? Joe Pesci. <laughs> Joe Pesci. Joe Pesci. Two reasons. First of all, I think he's a good actor, okay? <laughs> to me, that counts. Second, he looks like a guy who can get things done. <laughs> Joe Pesci doesn't fuck around. Doesn't fuck around. In fact, in fact, Joe Pesci came through on a couple of things that God was having trouble with. For years, I asked God to do something about my noisy neighbor with the barking dog. Joe Pesci straightened that cocksucker out with one visit. It's amazing what you can accomplish with a simple baseball bat. So I've been praying to Joe for about a year now. 
And I noticed something. I noticed that all the prayers I used to offer to God and all the prayers I now offer to Joe Pesci are being answered at about the same 50% rate. <laughs> half the time I get what I want, half the time I don't. Same as God, 50-50. Same as the four-leaf clover in the horseshoe, the wishing well in the rabbit's foot, same as the mojo man, same as the voodoo lady who tells you your fortune by squeezing the goat's testicles. It's all the same, 50-50. So just pick your superstition, sit back, make a wish, and enjoy yourself. And for those of you who look to the Bible for moral uh, lessons and literary qualities, I might suggest a couple of other stories for you. Uh, you might want to look at the three little pigs, that's a good one. It has a nice, happy ending. I'm sure you'll like that. Then there's Little Red Riding Hood, although it does have that X-rated part where the big bad wolf actually eats the grandmother, which I didn't care for, by the way. And finally, I've often always drawn a great deal of moral comfort from Humpty Dumpty. The part I like the best, all the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty Dumpty back together again. That's because there is no Humpty Dumpty and there is no God. None, not one, no God, never was. In fact, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put it this way. If there is a God, if there is a God, may he strike this audience dead. <laughs> See, nothing happened. Nothing happened. Everybody's okay. All right? Tell you what. Tell you what. I'll raise the stakes. I'll raise the stakes a little bit. If there is a God, may he strike me dead. See? Nothing happened. Oh, wait, got a little cramp in my leg. <laughs> and my balls hurt. Plus, I'm blind. I'm blind. Oh, now I'm okay again. Must have been Joe Pesci, huh? <laughs> God bless Joe Pesci. Thank you all very much. Joe bless you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you very much. Go on, I know you don't come back out. Ah, oh, that was fun. That was fun. George has a good way of putting things, doesn't he? And just um, to let you know, for the people who don't know that, that are watching this, who Joe Pesci is, he's an actor. And you might know him from a couple of... Um, Mafia movies, Goodfellas, uh, Casino, he plays one of the burglars in Home Alone, um, Lethal Weapon, he plays Leo, so yeah, that's Joe Pesci, just to let you know. <laughs> so yeah, I hope um, you enjoyed that, I really did, hang on. There we go, I'm back. <laughs> yeah, so that was fun. I really enjoyed that, guys. I hope you did as well. So, yeah, um, with that, I'm going to make it really simple and leave it there. Uh, I hope to see us again very soon. I will be doing a couple more reactions um, for this weekend. So, until the next video, I'll catch you on the next one. <laughs>